we entered this, the U.S. entered this, not in an ideal state. Uh, the administration, the previous administration, had added $5 trillion to the uh, debt. Uh, we had, and I think this is very important since we're going to talk about consumption today, we had a situation where from 2000 to 2007, the median working family household had their income decline in real terms by approximately $2,000. And that median working family was, uh, if you look at how they were overspending their money, what they were using their house to borrow against, in most cases it was not for frivolities. It was for the things we consider middle class Americans, all Americans, should have as part of their life. It was for the education of their children. It was for health care. It was for transportation. It was for insurance. And it was for their home. So uh, I, I think that is really important because so mu a basic guiding principle in the administration's policies, whether they are financial market policies or long-term deficit reduction policies or immediate stimulus policies, is to keep that fact in mind. There is a sense that the erosion of the U.S. economy is tied deeply to the erosion of the uh, income and spending power of that middle class family. It also is the, uh, how do you get to the 2050 solution because I want to say if there had been no financial crisis at all, nothing, not this, the panic of 2008 didn't occur. We were exactly a year ago and we didn't know this was going to happen. We still knew that by 2050 at current spending projection lines in the United States the, the uh, debt to GDP ratio would be approaching 300%. Well, if something can't last, it won't. That's impossible position. It was an impossible position a year ago. It's even more impossible now because we're going to build up some debt now. So we actually have to focus on these long-term issues. And of course, the major, major long-term issue is health. So it's funny to talk about health in this context. But it's absolutely essential because if you're trying to find a systemic solution to the world economy and a systemic solution to the organization of aggregate demand in the United States and the systemic solution to the government deficit and debt in the United States, you actually have to start with health. It's a very big issue for the U.S. The lesson of Lehman has tied their hands in a very important way. The lesson of Lehman has led them to conclude that creditors must be protected 100%. So a whole solution here, a whole solution here of swapping the debtors out for equity is gone because these institutions are considered to be too big to fail. But we have in the United States now essentially a crisis which is big enough to, to be the financial uh, equivalent of war. We have a warlike situation. And we don't have, because it's not a war as perceived by the administration and Congress working together, we don't have the capability in the executive and legislative branch to work together to, to handle a problem of this magnitude. So in comes an institution which does, the Federal Reserve, working with the Treasury. So I think you have to look at it that way. And of course, it's perfectly obvious that the rescue efforts of the U.S. government are about uh, preserving um, and helping elite structures. I mean, that's perfectly obvious. It does seem to me what's been going on in the last year or two in rescuing the, the way the financial system has been rescued is obviously making a lot of perfectly ordinary Americans very, very angry. And I have to say, I fully understand this. So it is surely possible that one byproduct of this crisis will be to shake some aspects of the social contract in the U.S. as it has been in the last 30 years, and I might say even, even longer. And clearly this administration, there's no doubt if you look at what it wants to do, is trying to move it in a somewhat more European direction. Mm -hmm.